another Journalist Toolbox training. I'm Mike Riley, the founder and editor of the Journalist Toolbox. Uh, today we're going to talk about Google Dataset Search and how to find uh, data uh, in this search tool, uh, which is a huge time saver. Uh, we're also going to talk a little bit about Google Search Operators, ways to uh, uh, search for uh, data sets maybe that aren't in the data set search algorithm. Uh, and you can go in and find data within a website or by a file type, uh, which are also big time savers. Um, you can find uh, more data search and visualization tools at journalisttoolbox.org. It's part of the Society of Professional Journalists. You can find it at spj.org or at journalisttoolbox.org. Um, feel free to follow us on Twitter at Journal Toolbox. We also have uh, many other training videos other than this one, up to 60 uh, right now on our YouTube channel. Uh, and then also we have a newsletter that comes out twice a month. Uh, that you can subscribe to that uh, and get all kinds of tools, tips, and tricks. So uh, we have a lot of data viz and public records resources there, which are relevant to uh, what we're talking about today with data journalism uh, and public records. So uh, the link to uh, Google Dataset Search is right here. Uh, you can hit pause and type it in, or uh, it's also available uh, in the uh, uh, area with uh, uh, description area right underneath our uh, YouTube channel uh, video here. So uh, you can access it either way. Same with the search operators, they're located in that description uh, as well. So here's data set search. Um, uh, Google uh, started this in November of 2018 uh, as a way to, much like Google Scholar works, narrow down people's searches. Uh, if I were to type in US mass shootings into a regular Google search, even if I typed in US mass shootings data, I would get blog posts and articles and all kinds of different things. I wouldn't really find the data set that I'm looking for. I'd have to dig down several pages. But data set search is a website uh, that has allows developers uh, to list their data sets in this search field uh, by going into this learn more area and filling out uh, this little developer uh, form here and, and providing uh, data about that data set, uh, information like a description and things like that, when it was created, uh, you know, is it uh, a free data set or a paid data set? Most of what you'll find in here is free and public record. Um, but they go through all the criteria uh, on what you need to do uh, to have your data set listed here. So if you're a developer uh, and you're putting up data sets, uh, that's a good page uh, to go and visit. For journalists, it's very helpful uh, because I can do a search on something like U.S. mass shootings and it farms out all of the stuff like the blog posts and things like that and just gets to the raw data sets. As I click down the left-hand side here, notice the information changes. Information is very valuable. And some are a little more detailed than others, but you know, it'll tell you know, what time period it covers, is it public domain, who the author is, what their methodology is. Some even have training videos on how to use it. This is a very well-known one, the Mother Jones uh, data set. Stanford Libraries has a very good uh, data set too on mass shootings. Uh, you know, typically pops up in the first uh, few screens here. You notice the search results, you know, showed more than 100 plus data sets. You can filter out by, if you just want free data sets, you know, is there any cost to access them? Satisa, this data set here, you know, you have to pay to access. But if you want only the free ones, you hit free up here in the filters area, and it gives you 35 data sets found, uh, and it starts to really narrow it down. Uh, you can also look at it through usage rights as well. Uh, you know, commercial or non-commercial use. You know, most of what you'll find in here is public record, uh, you know, uh, government agencies, things like that. Uh, you can narrow it down by format type, table or a document, if you want image or text file. Also last update, if you want something that's been updated in just the past year or the past month, uh, you can narrow your search down that way. So there's a lot of really good ways uh, that you can narrow the search down uh, very, very quickly. It does allow you to bookmark these down, save your searches, which is really nice. You can also share the search now. Uh, to social media channels. Uh, these tools were just added in uh, in late 2020, so it's kind of a nice little feature there. You can clear your filters by, by typing up here. Um, I always like to have a little fun with this, and, I, and when I do trainings with uh, newsrooms, I always tell reporters, just get in the habit of typing in, you know, things from your beat, you know, keywords from your beat, uh, and just getting familiar with what's there all the time, so you know, you know, to go and search for it. Uh, you know, if something runs, you run across something in one of your stories where you need a data set, so just kind of once a week, sit down and, and take a look through here uh, and see what's available. And uh, you can have a little fun with it too, you know, things like uh, tacos, you know, uh, I love tacos, uh, so I type it in, sometimes see, you know, what data sets are out there. 
Uh, and, you know, there's some silly stuff, you know, restaurants that sell burritos in the menu, tacos and burritos in the menu, and there's thousands of them, of course. But there's also data sets, you know, on things like Del Taco, uh, the foundation for uh, Taco Bell, uh, you know, the Yum! brands, uh, a lot of real helpful information up here as well, locations of all the Taco Bell restaurants. So if you're covering the restaurant industry, you can find some really interesting data here, especially, you know, we're coming right out of the pandemic right now. So uh, it uh, is, you know, something that is affecting, you know, not just small business, but uh, chain businesses as well. And you can pull a lot of sales data out of here. One thing I always remind people too is to remember that search engines are literal. I type in tacos, meaning the food. You know, I could probably add the word food there if I want to be a little more specific. Um, but it also reads it as an acronym, which is Tapered Amplifiers for Cold Atom Optical Systems, which is an acronym that NASA uses for a project that they have. Uh, so just always remember that when you're doing searches is, you know, they're literal. Uh, search engines are dumb. Uh, they will give you it back exactly what you type into them. Um, so use Google Dataset Search. It's a great shortcut tool. Like I say, it works a lot like Google Scholar does in that it narrows down your broad search just to a specific area. Uh, and again, get in the habit of checking it right around once a week because um, there's new data sets that show up there all the time. Um, so it's a really good resource uh, for you. I've also listed some search operators here. Uh, if you know Google Dataset Search doesn't get it done for you, the search operators uh, might be able to find something that's not listed in that. Um, you can search by file or file type. Um, it, it's file type will give you uh, a file format. You have to request, I want a CSV, a spreadsheet, uh, of U.S. mass shootings, okay? Um, and notice there's no space or period here in this first one. Uh, so I'm just going to copy this just for, uh, save us a little time. You can type these in if you want to. And I'm going to hit return. And what it gives me is raw data sets from Data World, Kaggle, uh, there's the Mother Jones one that we had just looked at in, in Google Data Set Search. Uh, Stanford Libraries is right here. These are the raw data sets that you can uh, dig out of here. A lot of them go to GitHub pages as you go through and, and start to really dig through uh, the search. So the file type search can really narrow down your search pretty quickly um, and sometimes give you things that don't appear in Google Data Set Search. I've played around with file type a little bit and I kind of changed the format of it. I added in a space and a period. I, I discovered this by just playing around with it. it. There wasn't any science to this. I was just like, well, you know, what would I get if I changed the search a little bit? And instead of taking me down to the raw data sets, it takes me up to the top level search pages uh, of uh, uh, the pages. So this is the home page for Stanford Libraries. Uh, so it gives me, you know, the top level page, which I have to dig down to get the data set. But I could read a little more information about the data set here if I'm not familiar with. Uh, the source. Um, so good little you know thing to do is anytime you're using search operators, tweak them a little bit and play around with them. Sometimes you just discover all kinds of new things you can do with search. Also, it's helpful to search within a site. Um, in this case, you can type in site colon, the URL of the site, the web address, um, no HTTP or anything, just you know, cdc.gov, and then whatever keywords that you're searching for. Most government websites, uh, you know, most media websites, have terrible search engines built into them. I'll go to the CDC website and search for things, and I'll get all kinds of weird things, press releases and silly things that I don't want. Um, uh, and you have to dig through the navigation to find it. Uh, you know, if you ever want to hide a dead body, just you know, bury it on uh, a lower level page in a government website. Nobody will find it. Um, uh, so, uh, it, but by using site colon cdc.gov, I can search the CDC site. Uh, through Google uh, and find all the relevant SARS pages. Google's algorithm is very good with this. So I'll go in here and I'll drop this in. Works for any website. You know, you can use it for, uh, you know, the Chicago Tribune's website or New York Times or whatever. Um, and it gives me the SARS homepage, a basic fact sheet, um, an about page of frequently asked questions. And these are, you know, guideline pages and stuff like that. These are really, you know, relevant pages to journalists. Um, and that algorithm just really is dialed in on that, no matter what you're, you're searching for uh, or what site you're searching. Um, so keep that one in mind as well. Those are two, when I'm searching for data sets, uh, you know, sometimes I'll put in SARS data here or something, uh, just to make it a little more specific. Uh, that uh, these two search operators I use probably more than any others. 
Uh, again, uh, you know, uh, visit Journalist Toolbox on a regular basis. Uh, we're putting up new tools all the time. We have a What's New section up here uh, on the upper right uh, that will uh, uh, provide uh, new resources uh, as we're adding them into the site. Uh, you know, there's close to just over 20,000 links on this uh, site. Uh, if you go into our little browse topics here, you can find all kinds of, uh, uh, you know, subtopics uh, as they're related to journalism, digital journalism, uh, social media, uh, you know, covering legal issues, uh, crime, and so on. Uh, subscribe to our newsletter. And again, uh, our training videos page, uh, you know, has not just this video, uh, but many, many others. Uh, up there on all kinds of digital and, and data skills. We have more than 60 up there. So, you know, do take advantage of, of that. They're all free. Um, so appreciate your time and we'll see you soon.